Flying into the Nassau airport in the Bahamas was one of the easiest airport experiences I've ever had, but there's still a few things I wish I would have known before arriving. Number one, they are still using paper immigration forms, so they have not gone digital yet, and they were handing these out as you were deplaning. They did not have them on the plane, so just bring a pen, be prepared for that. And there are really no other entry requirements if you were coming from the U.S. to the Bahamas besides a passport. There was a bit of a walk from the time you deplane until you get to immigrations, at least from where we deplaned. So if you have mobility issues or you're traveling with little kids, get the strollers out and be prepared for a little bit of a walk. Most of the people were unprepared to have to fill out these forms and they do not provide pens at the table. So a lot of people are asking to borrow mine. So just remember to pack some pens. Now we got really lucky because we traveled early on a Sunday morning and there were absolutely no lines in immigrations. In fact, this is the day we always travel and almost every airport that we've been to so far, if we arrive before noon on a Sunday, we breeze right through. But since they are doing everything manual, they haven't gone digital yet, they can have very long lines here. So just be prepared for that as well. For going downstairs, they did have a nice little visitor's booth. So if you are still looking for information about the island or things to do, they had a lovely little area here where you could get pamphlets and ask questions. Next step is you would go downstairs to get your bags if you checked in a bag. Now, if you follow us, you know I always try not to check in a bag. So we didn't have any bags to collect. So then we were able to go right to customs. Again, there was no wait for customs either, so we were able to breeze right through. We couldn't film, but you just put your luggage through a scanner and then you're on your way. So I think in total it took us about 10 minutes to get through the airport, which is very unusual. So I would expect at least 30 minutes to get through both immigrations and customs, but sometimes more. And then once you are through, there really isn't much more to the airport before going outside and finding your transportation. There's a little Dunkin' Donuts, a liquor store, a place that you can get snacks, obviously bathrooms, but it is a really small airport. Now we arrange transportation ahead of time, which we always do and always suggest to do with Viator.com. I will put the link in the description below. However, the Bahamas airport is very different from Cancun or Punta Cana. You're not gonna have an onslaught of people trying to sell you stuff, trying to approach you. So it is really nice. It's a much more laid back vibe. Now, if you are gonna use Viator.com for your airport transportation, make sure you read those reviews. That's that's what we did and we ended up choosing Elkins taxi service plus I love the fact that it was a small family owned business. We communicated before the trip and I let him know that we wanted to add a stop to the grocery store and the liquor store because we were staying at Baja Mar which I'm going to do a whole separate video on and I already knew ahead of time it was going to be really really expensive so I wanted to make sure that we had drinks in the room and snacks in the room as well. You can always wait to get to the airport to find taxi or transportation which I'm personally not a fan of. I like to plan ahead. Also you can be taken advantage of if you're not informed and know what the rates are. Elkin gave us another great tip and that is make sure you are in a vehicle that is authorized and has a license to transport tourists. So this is actually a great time to talk about the safety concerns that are in place right now around traveling to the Bahamas because there's a travel advisory in effect saying that there's an increase in crime and warning tourists about traveling to the Bahamas. Now we went in December and there was no travel advisory in effect. But even if there was, I would have looked and read between the lines because often when a government puts out a travel advisory, it's a protocol. So you really have to read what it is that they're talking about. And in the Bahamas, if I am correct, really it had to do with local crime. So again, you always have to do your own research anytime you're traveling anywhere and you have to feel comfortable about where you're going. So I'm not saying go there or don't go there, but what I'm saying is I felt very safe the entire time I was there and had absolutely no issues. And we actually went off the resort one night. We went to the fish fry and Elkin took us. And I felt very safe because Elkin was born and raised in Nassau. And he knows where to take us, where not to take us. He's been in the transportation business for years as well. And of course, I'm gonna do an entire separate video about our stay at Baja Mar. We took an amazing excursion as well. And we were only there for two nights and had an amazing time. 
And I will put the Viator link to Elkins Taxi Service in the description below. And I do respond to all comments and questions, so drop those in the comment section. And I think one of the biggest questions I always get about airport transportation is how much did it cost? So it really does depend on how many people, the time of day, there's so many factors that goes into the price. But from the airport to Baja Mar with a stop, you can expect to pay around $50 for two people. And departing from the Nassau International Airport was just as easy. And a huge advantage if you are flying into the US, you can clear US customs at the Bahamas airport. So that means when you land in the US, you do not have to wait in any customs lines. You can just get off the plane and go home. So they really try making traveling to the Bahamas from the US very easy. And they accept TSA pre-check and global entry, which we have, so we were able to breeze through the lines and security in I would say about 10 minutes from the time we were dropped off. Now there was not a lot going on in the terminal. There's only one terminal for the international departures. So they only have a few restaurants, a few shops, and they do not have any airport lounges as well. Now they had advised us to arrive to the airport three hours before our flight, but I knew we had global entry. So I decided to do it in two hours. And honestly, I really didn't even need to do that because we still had an entire hour and a half before our flight left. But you always want to err on the side of caution, especially when you're flying out. And if you don't have global entry or any of those types of things, the lines can get very long. So just make sure you leave yourself plenty of time. I hope you found this video about the Nassau airport helpful. Again, I do respond to all comments and questions and keep an eye out for those other videos I'm gonna do about our trip to the Bahamas. And if you are new, please like and subscribe and keep following us at Three Days and Trace Noches, where we keep bringing you honest reviews, travel tips, and information about the destinations that we go to and show you you can have an amazing vacation in a really short amount of time.